It's January 19th, 1999, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. BlackBerry would one day control half the U.S. smartphone market. But when Research in Motion, as they were then called, launched the BlackBerry 850 on this day in 1999, it wasn't a smartphone because that term hadn't been invented yet. In fact, if you held it up to your ear and talked, you'd look stupid. Instead, (laughs) it was marketed as a, wait for it, two-way pager. No longer must you wait for your beloved to call an intermediary and dictate a reply down the phone to answer your text. Now they could do it themselves with their own thumbs. (laughs) It would have looked to our eyes more like a pager than a mobile phone and certainly more like a pager than a smartphone. And what separated the 850 from the competition was that it had email functionality. The yuppie of 1999 could use the 850 to check their emails on the go, which at this point would put you on the cutting edge of business technology. And hence it became an executive device, something that only people that were earning a lot of money needed because you'd have to be someone the idea of like having to read your emails on the move seemed ridiculous because this was before gmail and cloud-based email your email was associated with a desktop computer so a mobile device that would ping from a desktop when you're queuing for a coffee you know is your life so urgent that you must read that email right then that only appealed to executives anyway but secondly because it was hugely expensive so Mm. it was uh, 399 dollars for the unit which isn't too bad i suppose even in 1999 but then there was a flat rate monthly service of 40 dollars a month to send unlimited messages to other blackberry users uh which again like again looked at now like if it was 40 dollars a month to send unlimited whatsapps to anybody i suppose that's what a lot of people currently do on their contracts Mm. isn't it but it wasn't that it was an elite club of other blackberry users and you still had to have a landline and a desktop and a dial-up internet (laughs) and a mobile phone in your pocket that wasn't your BlackBerry. (laughs) So really, this was something that was only for high flyers. And this origin story as a pager goes some way to explain why the BlackBerry developed that very distinct look where it has a full keyboard on the front rather than just, you know, phone buttons. And it was actually this keyboard that would go on to inspire the name BlackBerry. It's derived from the the appearance of the sort of shiny, bulbous black keys. Well, the two founders of Research in Motion, Mike Lazaridis and Douglas Fragan, didn't really think of themselves as phone makers in the first place. Research in Motion, which hilariously has one of those not quite founded in a garage, but you know, humble origin stories where it was uh, its first office was above a bagel shop in Waterloo, Ontario, in Canada. At the very beginning, they weren't producing pages at all. They were sort of dabbling in all of these different projects. They had an LED system for General Motors, and they had a local network thing that they developed for IBM, and even this film editing system that won an Oscar in 1998. So their research really was in motion. They were do- researching in a whole lot of different directions. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, they stumbled into creating telephones. But this was an enormous hit. It reached its peak in 2011 when they were selling more than 50 million units a year. And as recently as 2009, Fortune proclaimed that uh, Research in Motion RIM were the world's fastest growing company. It seems extraordinary to think about now. In 2006, the Webster's New World College Dictionary enshrined Crackberry as the new word of the year. This idea of being addicted to your BlackBerry phone. Al Gore was an early adopter, apparently received his 2000 election day results on his BlackBerry. It seems Im- like completely impossible to remember, but it was a cool badge of honour to have sent from my BlackBerry written at the footer of your email. And it all started in 2002 when they launched the BlackBerry 5810. That was the first model that had phone capability. So you see how far it was from being, you know, a phone that evolved into a smartphone. It just ended up evolving into a smartphone from being something else entirely. You did have to use a headset at that point to to use the phone capability. But it, but it still offered the email and web browsing. So these elements that we would come to expect from the smartphone. And then it was really in the sort of late 2000s that it 
began to pick up this cultural cachet. Barack Obama was a high-profile fan. Apparently, he refused to give up his BlackBerry when he entered the White yes. House in 2008. I remember that story now, yes. yes. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. yeah, so there was this legion of trendy users that helped turn... You know, the, the success was really stratospheric. In 2002, when it was released, it wasn't a huge hit straight away. But then you had all of these high-profile people, you know, using it. And it was a way of showing that you were busy and important. And that's a very attractive thing when you're, you know, when you're trying to sell devices. Obama's refused refusal to give up his BlackBerry when he became president was seen by marketing experts to have been a sort of uh, celebrity endorsement that would have been akin to between $25 million and $50 million worth of, <laughs> of advertising, which, I suppose, which does make sense. The leader of the free world is a, an addict, is a crackberry addict. Um, you know, <laughs> you can see how that's good press for your company. Well, also, if you're targeting business leaders right. and you've literally got the leader the <laughs> yeah. commander in chief yeah. yeah that's a good brand endorsement <laughs> and of course nowadays the real elite they don't do emails do they like <laughs> they're the people who say oh yeah i check my emails on a friday you get the out of office thanks for your message i'm not going to respond today that's the true elite it's us dogs bodies who are constantly checking our phone <laughs> and what made the blackberry so addictive was that it had bbm blackberry mm. messenger i don't know if you recall back in the day asking people for their bbm pins you yes. had to have a pin to connect with someone and then you could talk with them what made it revolutionary was read receipts again a concept that was inspired by an email feature so mm. rather than, and it completely transformed the way we message. I was thinking about this because if you think about how texting worked, you would send your text, walk away, and later on you'd come and check your phone and see if you had a message, almost like you were checking your answer phone. Yes. Whereas, mm. these, whereas having read receipts created the expectation of live chat and it turned it into its own activity. Yeah, and the other component of the crackberry addiction was that little infuriating brain satisfying endorphin setting off flashing red light that I honestly when I had a Blackberry I remember waking up in the middle of the night to see if my my Blackberry was flashing or not you see if your incredible witticisms have been received by the intended recipient yeah to see what people <laughs> thought of my <laughs> I've shot up in someone's estimation today <laughs> sweating and regretful actually <laughs> wondering <laughs> why they hate me so <laughs> oh, you weren't the only one who was addicted to BBM Arian because Sean Kingston in 2010 released the song BBM, the chorus of which goes, BBM, BBM, BBM every day, BBM, BBM, BBM every day, because I've been hitting up your phone all day, but I found a way to communicate BBM me every day. <laughs> it's, how is that not a hit? <laughs> <laughs> There was no word count on BBM. He could have gone longer. <laughs> yeah, I think that was that was an album cut, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> there are other sort of innovative things as well that BlackBerry were doing. If you look at the home screen of the 6710 from 2002, I mean, yes, it's monochrome and bitty and looks sort of ridiculous now, but it is reminiscent of what Apple supposedly did to revolutionise phone design, you know, all the skeuomorphic stuff. Uh, the, you know, the, an envelope represents mail and an alarm clock represents alarms. That's all there on the BlackBerry. Every look of the smartphone is there apart from the functionality. And that was the issue, wasn't it? In the end, there was no BlackBerry app store. I think that was the real killer because I think there was still a market for the QWERTY keyboard. When Angry Birds caught on, there was no BBM version of that. Yeah, and that quite rapid downturn in popularity was so at odds with the elation of having a BlackBerry when it was at its peak. I, mm. I got a BlackBerry Curve in 2011 when I was in I was in my second year at uni and it felt so good. It really <laughs> felt like I was in student life. Do you know what I mean? Like I had come to uni with a flip phone, an Alcatel flip phone. <laughs> and just ha <laughs> and I was going through, I, actually yesterday I had a quick dig through my Facebook to see if I had any old statuses or anything of reference seeing the BlackBerry and oh, no. quite a few things came up and almost all of them are me apologising for typos in the preceding comment because of my stubby fingers yes. mistyping on the tiny keyboard. <laughs> and the other one was I had loads of friend statuses that were just saying, can everyone send me their BBM pin, new phone, that kind of thing. You know, it was a huge part, especially of student life. And I think yeah. because students were always available to chat, having a BlackBerry helped kind of reframe that as I am busy and important. I am always online rather than like I want to just chat with my friends constantly. And this year there's been a bit of a BlackBerry update, hasn't there? In the sense that there will be no more BlackBerry updates. <laughs> so if you own an old BlackBerry, it's 
It's bricked now. Yeah, they sort of said that gradually over the next little while, they're going to stop being able to make calls, send messages and access the internet. So, you know, otherwise pretty useful. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine <laughs> yeah. what's left. Still a good prop if you want to pretend to be Pharrell from 2011. (laughs) And in the press release, they rather hopefully wrote, We thank our many loyal customers and partners over the years and invite them to learn more about how BlackBerry provides intelligent security software and services to enterprises and governments all around the world. I was like, thanks, BlackBerry. Come to think of it, I am a government looking for some intelligent security (laughs) software. (laughs) I will pivot over to that. Thank you. (laughs) Tomorrow. He actually captured and decapitated a second dove, presumably while everyone was sitting around in shock about the first dove. Love the show? Support the show. Patreon.com slash Retrospectors. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.